Good morning. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. You were chosen by the Father, you were chosen for the Son, you were chosen from all women and for women. Shine in one, gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Good morning. My friends, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass worthily, we turn to our merciful Father and ask Him to forgive us for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, what more shall I say? I have not time to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, did what was righteous, obtained the promises. They closed the mouths of lions, put out raging fires, escaped the devouring sword. Out of weakness, they were made powerful, became strong in battle, and turned back foreign invaders. Women received back their dead through resurrection. Some were tortured and would not accept deliverance in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others endured mockery, scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed in two, put to death at sword's point. They went about in skins of sheep or goats, needy, afflicted, tormented. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered about in deserts and on mountains, in caves and in crevices in the earth. Yet all these, though approved because of their faith, did not receive what had been promised. God had foreseen something better for us, so that without us, they should not be made perfect. The word of the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which, 
toward those who take refuge in you. You show in the sight of the children of men. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. You screen them within your abode from the strife of towns. Blessed be the Lord whose wondrous mercy he has shown me in a fortified city. Once I said in my anguish, I am cut off from your sight, yet you heard the sound of my pleading when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you his faithful ones. The Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requites those who act proudly. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs who had an unclean spirit met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. And he led them, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about 2,000 rushed down a steep bank into the sea, where they were drowned. The swineherds ran away and reported the incident in the town and throughout the countryside. And people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, go home 
to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. It's hard to imagine living among the tombs as the man in the grip of unclean spirits is forced to do. But in the eyes of the town, he was already dead, so violent that he had to be shackled for the protection of all. So beyond any help they could give him. As we read Mark's account of Jesus' driving out the, the evil spirit legion from the man, consider the people who are, for all intents and purposes, dead to us, the family member or friend with whom we've had a falling out, the neighbor whose trouble or the coworker we've learned to avoid whenever possible. Jesus calls us to bring these folks out of isolation to the community of God's beloved. And we should recognize the tombs where we dwell, the tombs of cynicism that make us dead to the good around us, the graves of hopelessness where we buried trust and optimism some time ago, the pit of self-centeredness in which we grieve for our own problems and disappointments far removed from the more serious and devastating challenges faced by many others. In the light of the healing Jesus, may we bring the dead in our lives back to life and may we find our own way into the light, out of the tombs in which we have buried ourselves. Aware of God's great love for us, with complete trust, we place our needs before the Lord. That the church and her leaders may clearly pro proclaim the commands of the Lord and instill in all people the confidence that they can observe those commands. Let us pray to the Lord. That lawmakers may come together to bring spiritual and material blessings to the people they are called to serve. Let us pray to the Lord. That members of our parish family who are in need may find help and assistance through prayer and the efforts of this faith community. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have died may share in the glory of eternal life with the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord for peace in the world, for the unemployed and underemployed, for our troops, for an end to abortion and euthanasia, and for the ill of our parish, especially those in our prayer list, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for Gloria Nicosia, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, let us present to God all of our intentions. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, trusting in your great love and power, we ask that you hear and answer these petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now share this peace with one another. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. pray the act of spiritual communion with those who are joining us for this Mass from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. This Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign, infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign.